espera Ves la Señor en mí Estoy dispuesto a lo que quieras No importa lo que sea Tú llámame a servir Llévame donde los hombres Necesiten tus palabras Necesiten mis ganas de vivir Donde falte la esperanza Donde falte la alegría Simplemente por no saber de ti Mary MacKillop International in Peru is one of the six missions that we raise funds for at Claver MacKillop College. The reason for organising this expedition was that we wanted to make our connection with this particular mission stronger in the hope that all of our community would come to a greater understanding and experience of our baptismal calling, our responsibility to others. We knew that heading over with the view that we were going to help the poor wasn't going to be helpful to either parties, and we thought it best that we experience the charism of Mary MacKillop through spending time with the sisters in Lima and doing something with them, something that would support them in their ministry in Peru. Doing this gave us the opportunity to genuinely ask questions about poverty and the reasons people are forced to live this kind of life. We all actually found it very confronting in light of the comfort and wealth of our own lives. Our leadership expedition and mission became a pilgrimage. It was a journey of discovery. We certainly gained further perspective on needs and wants. It was a joy sharing with others en route. And living a simple life was a relief when we finally got used to it. Our journey was supported by the prayers of the church as we joined together each morning for Lords, again at midday, and for Vespers and reflection in the evening. And it helped us make sense of our journey and um, to recognise the sacredness in our encounters. We very much enjoyed the hospitality of the sisters in Lima. The dynamic between our students and the sisters was great to see. We're so grateful for their kindness and generosity. Our work with them has enriched our understanding of the charism of Mary MacKillop and it's strengthened our bonds of love and care with those who live in these dreadfully harsh conditions in San Juan de Lorengancho. Doing some videoing of the initial artwork, all the white work has been done, as you can see. Jason. What's your part in this excellent artwork? Well, being the uh, Aboriginal representative of the school, I thought I might just, you know, get my skills out and uh, show people how it's done. Alright. What are you actually doing, though? Uh, just these dots. What, what significance does your red dot do? Um, mine's like the earth. It represents path, the earth. And it's, yeah, it's the earth. The, our journey. It's all about journey, so this is the land that we're looking for. The girls have this idea that they... What significance of the design is it? Uh, it's basically a journey, but instead of using dots throughout the whole thing, we'll use feet. Okay. Else, and then we'll do um, a meeting or sitting place for on that pole. On the empty one that hasn't been filled with dots yet? No, it hasn't been done yet. And then This is our pilgrim staff. I'll pop it in. Okay. As you can see, it's Aboriginal art looking good. Yeah. Stellian colours. Yeah. And then red for the red centre. And then it's surrounded by blue because Australia is surrounded by blue. Yeah. By the sea. Yeah. And then we have our little journey down here. Okay. Journey, as you can see, people have signed their name as they've been holding the staff. There's me. Jessica, and as they make the journey down towards the next dot, which symbolises Matupe, and Matupe. it's blue in the middle for the eye that cries, and then we have like the earthy colours, because it's like, it's desert sort of here, and the red is the yeah, the red is the um, paint that they chucked on the um, rocks as like a sign of violence, because 
it has a violent history. The two page. And then, awesome. something significant there was that the people that live here um, come from the mountains and they were persecuted up in the mountains and that shows the blue is the mountains and the red the violence up there and they've had to come down to live in the 2K because to ex escape persecution. Every stone originally had a name on it of a person who was killed or who is missing because of the uh, violence that has existed here. In 2007, the whole monument was attacked. They threw orange paint all over it because they disbelieved, they were trying to deny that the violence happened. And it was a continuing sign of the intolerance that still exists amongst some people. The names, the stones are gradually being removed and they're being redone and etched so that the names won't fade again due to pollution. You do not step on the stones, obviously. Each one marks a person, each one marks a story. It's over towards that area, I think it's on the second row in, that there is the stone which has Sister Irene McCormack's name That, of course, it. makes it very significant for us as a Josephite who was killed also here during the years of violence, uh, that her name here is to also represented. Love all people, establish your kingdom here in this place. Love and compassion, peace and justice, mercy and forgiveness. Freedom from all forms of oppression and exclusion and freedom for living in right relationship with God, ourselves, others and creation. May the same Holy Spirit shed the ministry of Jesus on earth and the ministry of St. Mary Miguel and St. Edmund Rice shape us in love so that our hearts may be in our faithful life as we serve each other. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. The big problem in all this area is there's no water, as you can understand. So the water comes in big tanks and... Uh, Everything, it costs a lot of money. Just a quick question, is that all the tanks that are in front of the house? Is that yeah, water or yeah, gas? those are the water tanks. There. Okay, cool. Yeah. And so the truck comes in and he goes up all these big roads and things. How things. often does the truck come? Oh, yes. he'd, they'd be working all day in different places. Um, including where I live, I live up that road, up, way over there. Sitting in Matupo in the project, doing our thing. This is a couple of work we've done with the f painting the fence. Main project, we did all of the walls and the stuff yesterday. We just got around there to do that, sister. Just chilling.
What's up, homie? I got all of that down there to do. Hopefully by this afternoon. <laughs> what do you do here in Peru, sister? Well, I, I go to the jail um, about three times a week, and um, I teach English to the prisoners. Mm -hmm. They're political prisoners. They've what? been in prison for some that I've known have been in for 18 and 19 years. Yeah. They're, what type of things are they in there for? Like what? For um, political reasons. For I suppose you would have heard about. Um, the Shining Path. Oh, okay, yes, of course, yes, at the library. Some, yes. some of those people that are in jail have been in for a long time um, because they were part of that um, political party. Yeah. And um, they came out of universities. They learnt about trying to do something better for Peru. Unfortunately, it wasn't the best way. Yeah. But they were young and they were impressionable and they wanted to fight for Peru. But it wasn't the best thing. But they're all, for me, the ones that I know, they're my friends. Yeah. And um, I see them as people. And yeah. So I, you teach them English? and I teach them English, yeah. What else do you do here? Um, well, apart from jail, I work in the parish. I work with um, adults preparing children for, um, no, I work with adults. Uh, these adults are preparing their kids for First Communion. Then I work with young people who actually do the lessons for the kids preparing for First Communion. And I also work in um, the area of health too, in social welfare work too. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. and how so long have you been? three aspects. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you've done, how long have you been in Peru, you said? I've been in here for 16, 16 years. 16 years, yeah. that's great. Right. Mm -hmm. And you also paint fences? I always paint fences. You also paint fences? <laughs> <laughs> very, very blue paint. But we wouldn't have done it, only we had some really generous visitors that came to help us and provide for us too. Yeah. So we're very happy, yeah. Do you want to say anything to all the people back at Clever? Well, thanks for coming and it's, it was really... Um, I'd love to go to Brisbane now and just um, visit the school one day, maybe. It'd be good You're to welcome see where anytime. you come from. Yeah, yeah. you can come paint our fences. Ah! G'day mate. See, g'day mate. G'day mate. Yeah, muy bien. G'day mate. G'day mate. Yeah. <laughs> she'll be right, mate. She'll, she'll be right. She, she, or no worries, bro. Yeah, or no worries. Hello, <laughs> oh, I'm Sister Katrina. Oh, and I'm Geraldine. <laughs> we both live here in Matupe with Margaret. I work here in the Biblioteca, which these wonderful students have been painting and making look absolutely just beautiful. I work here three afternoons a week. One afternoon I also I work with the special needs children with Sister Claire who lives up at Hickamarca, a bit further from here. Um, and I work with Margaret with the um, Catechesis Familiar, which is the catechesis program for the children. So a lot of time is involved in that. I've called out to lots of velorios, which is like a vigil prayer service when somebody has died. They don't have their services in the church, very seldom in the church. They have them in the houses. And a group of people from the community will go to the house to offer the prayers uh, for the dead and to support the family in their time of grief. And then sometimes the next day, the day of the burial, we're asked to go back again. All of those things pretty well keep me busy, don't they? <laughs> oh, and then there's all the meetings. And what do you do, Sister Geraldine? Well, I don't do very much. Oh, no. <laughs> Try and keep Katrina and Margaret in order. Yeah, that's right. Seems like a full-time job. Yeah. <laughs> um, my main uh, effort is working in a bibliotheque, which is like a homework centre for secondaries and primary children. Uh, we open at five o'clock and uh, finish at nine, usually, except during the winter we close a bit earlier. It's been freezing. And what do you think about the work that's going on? Oh, absolutely fabulous. <laughs> a great bunch of uh, uh, chicos y chicas. Yeah, tiene muchas inteligencia y corazón, heart. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a great 
experience to have the young people around. Oh, we're happy to be here and we thank you very much, guys. And do you have a message that you'd like to send back to Clairvo? Oh, just thank you to each and every person in the school, the students and the staff. If um, the group that's here is any indication of the quality of the school, then it must be an absolutely wonderful school. We're very grateful for the money that you've raised. This morning I went to the market with a couple of you people and bought lots of toys for the students. That, uh, I hope to run a... Um, play group for children on Sunday afternoon like so they can come and play and um, so it's just wonderful and just thank you for keeping us in your thoughts and in your prayers and keep up the good work. Gracias. Yes I couldn't uh, speak more highly either. It's been wonderful uh, seeing how you all cooperate together and uh, the way the teachers and yourselves work together so well. So thank you. Thank you very much for having us. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, gosh. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Where are we off to, kids? The school. Oh, I mean, we're church. starting our project. So this is going into the bibliography. And this is where lots and lots of work's going on. How are you feeling, Rach? I hate everywhere. <laughs> Just getting the journey started. Yeah. Hanging rocks at people. Once they know that there are toys there, and once it becomes a regular thing, it'll be no It's like that film, you know, build it and they will come. <laughs> 